Today we continue our sermon series, The Attributes of God, and we want to know God for who he says he is so that we can have a relationship with him, also so that we can become more like him, to be sanctified. And today we're going to learn three attributes that are completely unique to God. Today we'll explore God is omni, omniscient, all-knowing, omnipresent, always everywhere, all the time, and omnipotent, all-powerful. As I was preparing for this sermon, it reminded me of my own limitations. We all have limitations, but God doesn't. We will never be omni, but there are very practical ways that these attributes here apply to our lives. And we're gonna start with omniscient, since school starts on Wednesday, the year to begin learning more and more with other students. So omniscient, all-knowing. And here's the truth, school is for adults as well. I went to college and I went to seminary and I would say the biggest takeaway is that there's always more to learn. Never stop learning. I just registered to attend a symposium at my alma mater, Concordia Seminary, in St. Louis, and the title is Technology and the Church, a topic I'm really interested in because the church and technology continue to converge together for good and for bad. I also watch DIY YouTube videos to learn how to fix and build things and fix things around the house. Anyone else do that here? We're always learning. God doesn't learn. He knows everything. He possesses perfect knowledge, and his knowledge and understanding is infinite. Psalm 147, verse 5, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. Would you say the rest with me? His understanding has no limit. So after Christ was raised from the dead, he had breakfast with Peter and some of the disciples on the beach. I would have loved to have been there, breakfast on the beach with Jesus. And Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter confessed that Jesus knows all things. Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. When I think of God's omniscience, I think of Google, a search engine that lets you type your interest in the field and learn about anything in the world. The gold medal count. It's always up to date. This is from last night, right before bed. China has climbed ahead of us in the gold medal count. Well, in less than one second, you can find almost anything that you want. News stories move at the speed of light. Google almost knows it all. But Google will always be learning. It must continue to learn to stay relevant. But God knows all things. The past, the present, everything about the future. Here's where it gets personal and makes my head spin. God knew me before the creation of the world. Wow. And he had plans for my life before time began. God said to the prophet Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. That doesn't mean that I was some idea in God's mind. He said, I knew you. Every hair on my head, every thought, every fear in the heart, every Disappointment, he knew it all. He knows how many days we will live. Psalm 139, verse 16, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Isn't that amazing? Scripture tells us that God predestined us to be his sons and daughters before the creation of the world. Ephesians 1, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ. Combine God's omniscience with his goodness and he knows what's best for us. 
and it's a test to trust his ways for your life. This is the challenge of this attribute, to trust that God's ways are higher than your ways, that his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My wife and I, we have four children, and sometimes parents have to say no to children and what they want, right? Sometimes parents say, we know what's best for you, and this isn't what's best for you. And that's hard for children to accept. And that's how it is for us with God sometimes. We think we know better than God, and we don't. God knows what's best, and sometimes it's in direct conflict with what we want to do. As we mature, we accept that God's ways are higher than our ways. And as we mature, we accept that we have limitations. And we need to go to the one who has no limitations, God Almighty. This is what 1 John 3.20 says, for whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart, and would you say the rest with me, and he knows everything. Since we don't know everything, we humbly acknowledge that we have limits, and then, this is what we do, church, we pray. And when you pray, you're approaching the throne of the all-knowing. You're connecting with the source of all wisdom, knowledge, and power. Greater than Google, greater than AI. Have you heard about AI? Artificial intelligence, right? It's the latest technology craze. If you visit chatgpt.com, it will help write a short story, plan a trip, create a workout plan, and test your knowledge of ancient civilizations. This was my first time visiting it. And each time I clicked it to refresh, there were new things it promised to do for me. The goal is for computers to think and eventually to know everything. Sounds like God, doesn't it? But computers will always have limitations because they're always learning. And when we come to worship on Sundays, we come to hear the thoughts of God in Scripture. And when we read Scripture, we tap into the mind of God. And when you pray and read the Bible, God reveals hidden things, deep things that are beneficial for your life. The prophet Daniel asked God to reveal to him the meaning of the king's dream. Daniel's life and others with him. It was life and death because the king was so angry and troubled by his dream. He demanded to know what it meant. The magicians, the enchanters, the astrologers couldn't interpret it. It looked like a death sentence for Daniel and his friends. So Daniel went to the all-knowing and he prayed. And then God gave him the vision of what it meant. And Daniel praised God and said, Praise be to the name of God forever and ever. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. I thank you and praise you, God of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we asked for. And you have made known to us the dream of the king. Does this still happen today? Does he still reveal deep and hidden things? Yes. But we have to be like Daniel and pray and accept our limitations and go to the God who has no limits. God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, wrote Isaiah. And scripture tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. As I said earlier, Amy and I have four children, and each one had a stage when their favorite phrase, which they would repeat often, was, I know, I know. If you have children, you might be able to relate with that. The dressing comes out fast, I know. Soap stings when it gets in the eye. 
I know. How often are we like that? As adults, God, I know what's best for me. I know. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And look at the rest of the verse. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. The good news is that God wants us to ask him for wisdom and knowledge. James the apostle encouraged us and promised that when we ask God for wisdom, he will give it to us from heaven. Do you need wisdom? Raise your hand if you need wisdom. We all do. So where are you going to go? The Lord. And he gives it in abundance. I love this promise from the Apostle Paul. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? And then look at this. But we... Look at that pronoun. We have the mind of Christ. Together as the church, the wise counsel, and the spirit of the Lord, we have the mind of Christ. Thanks be to God. The second omni attribute is omnipresence. And this means that God is always with us, everywhere, all at the same time. Someone once said to me, the good news is that God is with you always. The bad news is that God is with you always. He sees all the good that you do, and he watches all the evil that we do as well, and he's right there. When I think of God's omnipresence, I think of Google Earth. How many of you have used Google Earth? It's an application that enables you to search anywhere in the world in real time. Type in Rome, Italy, and a satellite up in the sky will move a camera to look down and show you in real time what's happening in Rome, Italy. You can even type the address of your house and see if it's still standing. Years ago, I performed a wedding. The groom was from the local area. The bride was from Brazil. Many from her family could not make the wedding. So the groom figured out a way to pipe in a live feed of the wedding ceremony from his laptop for the family to see. And I tell you, as a preacher, that was my first time when I preached over the internet and I was preaching the gospel to people in Brazil and people in the local area. And it just boggled my mind at the moment to think that, wow, but there are limitations because we can't be more than one place physically at the same time. The closest thing I've seen to someone do this is the Four Corners National Monument. Anyone ever been there? It's out west. Take a look at this picture. At one time, you can be in four different states. Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. And when I was 20 years old, I went to Rome, Italy to see what the human mind could do in art. I love art. And I saw some amazing art. But what I remember most as the biggest takeaway is that God is everywhere. He's worldwide. All at the same time. King David wrote, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up, to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. So there's no escape. He's everywhere. That's comforting, but it's also frightening. And here's where it gets very personal. His presence is with you now and with every believer dwelling inside by the Holy Spirit. That's incredible. Think about that. Even the believers imprisoned in China, God is there. And today, he is with us under bread and wine. The forgiveness of sins. And not only us, 
but he is with believers everywhere who receive communion today. Isn't that amazing? That is incredible. Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And then he said, and surely I am with you always. How often is he with us? Always. Even as school starts. Even as teachers and parents get back in a new routine, Jesus is with you always. To the very end of the school year, is that what it says? To the very end of the age. He's with you now, and he loves you. And the third omni-attribute is God's omnipotence, and this is that God is all-powerful. Jesus speaks of God's omnipotence when he says, do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of the Father. When I was young, I would watch reruns of the world's strongest man contest. Anyone ever else watch reruns of the strongest man? No one else, just me. Okay. Uh, check out this guy pulling a train. This guy pulled a train. That's amazing. And this one, a man turned over a car. This man flipped a car 15 times in five minutes. Wow. I was always amazed at their power, and I once visited an event where a Christian group called the Power Team performed incredible feats of strength, like bending bars of metal and breaking eight bricks at one time with their head. <laughs> they did that. It was amazing. It was awesome to witness this power live in person. God has gifted the world with great power. The danger is power can be destructive. Wayward parents abuse children. Governments allow genocides. Sin and the devil are powerful. Addictions are powerful. And the tongue is powerful. James, the brother of our Lord, said, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. The Bible says your enemy prowls like a roaring lion. Lions are strong. When it comes to strength, we're overpowered spiritually if we go on our own without God. If we try to fight this battle alone, we will be overpowered. But I'll tell you this, church, in Christ Jesus, God crushed the head of the serpent destroying his power and his accusations against us. And the devil is a chained lion. His power is extinguished under the cross of Christ. And this is what scripture says, if God is for us, who can stand against us? So we find power in the most unlikely places. I want to share with you three places of power. I invite you to write these down. The first one is under the cross. Now it looks like a place of weakness because there a man died. It looks like weakness because there he was crucified. But I'll tell you, church, this is the greatest place of strength. For there at the cross is the blood of Jesus. And under the cross we live washed by the Spirit of God. Under the cross... We keep our eyes on the empty tomb where there's victory over death. And I'll tell you, Jesus isn't on the cross anymore. He's alive and well. And he's king of kings and lord of lords. Chris Tomlin, one of my favorite musical artists, wrote a song titled, Mighty is the Power of the Cross. What can take a dying man and raise him up to life again? What can heal a wounded soul 
What can make us white as snow? What can fill the emptiness? What can mend our brokenness? Mighty, awesome, wonderful is the holy cross where the lamb laid down his life to lift us from the fall. 1 Corinthians, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Sin is powerful, but the blood of Jesus is more powerful. Death is powerful, but the resurrection of Christ is more powerful. The grave is powerful, but God's power to raise the living and the dead on the last day is more powerful. Satan's lies are powerful, but the word of God, this is the second place to go that's a place of power. The word of God is more powerful. Jesus said, let there be light. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And his voice said to Lazarus, Lazarus, get up. And the dead man came out, strips of linen. And one day he will say, not just to Lazarus, but to all of us, get up. And we will rise and be with him on a new earth. No more suffering or pain. Thanks be to God for his power over the grave for us. And the third place to go to is the church. We don't look powerful to the world, but there's power and strength when we gather together. Hebrews 10, 24, let us consider how to spur one another on to love and good deeds. And when we're alone and vulnerable, it's then that we're weak. It's also why small groups are powerful, small groups in the church to build connections, to support each other in the faith. As we start a new school year, church, I invite you to make this time a priority for you and your family. Make it the highest priority because we need God. How many of you need God in your life? I need God in my life. So don't give up this habit. Our sinful nature wants to isolate us but isolation, that's when we're at our worst. We need the body. It makes me think of the garden fence I'm building for Amy. It's my first real construction project. The previous fence wasn't secured well and was coming out of the ground, and the gate wouldn't even close, so we basically welcomed in deer and woodchucks and every other animal to eat our plants. And I said, enough. So, I'm not finished with it yet, but the new fence has seven foot four by four posts secured by concrete, held together by horizontal beams and wood stain to repel the water. And we're currently adding the metal fabric to the bottom. And the goal is a strong, long lasting fence to keep out deer, woodchucks, and rabbits. But just yesterday, I saw a hole going under. <laughs> we gather together and God's word holds us together. Prayer strengthens us and protects us against the evil one. And together, church, as we worship, we develop deep roots that secure our faith. We need this time together and the world doesn't understand it. Why go to church? It's so outdated to go to church. You don't understand. I need church. I need this time together. I need to strengthen my faith. I think of sports teams. They know they need to practice in person. And it's so important for them to practice in person that if they miss, what happens? The coach takes away playing time. Because it's so important to be together in person. Now what we're doing here today isn't a sport. It's spiritual warfare with eternal consequences. 
but we do share this commonality. We need to practice our faith. We need to practice communion. We need to hear the word read. We need to pray and hold each other accountable. Here's a photo from the golf outing last Sunday. 20 of us got together. It was a great time outside. I didn't play well, my team didn't win, but it was a win for God. We had fun. We enjoyed each other's company, and Mark McMahon gave a tremendous devotion about mulligans. It was great. And then this is Friday night. 41 youth here to, to worship God. Can we give God praise? Isn't that amazing? Five adults, 41 youth to begin the school year. Hot dogs, fun, prayer, God's word, worship. Kudos to Brian and the team. That's power right there. It's strength. Strength for this school year. So to close today, God knows what's best for us. God is always with us. And God gives us power for today. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for your word, which is power. We thank you for prayer. We thank you, God, for this time to worship you, to be in your presence, to keep the habit. We know there is strength when we gather together. We see our brothers and sisters who believe in you and who trust in you. And Lord, it gives us strength to know that we're not alone. And Lord, we know you're always with us. We thank you, God, for your promise to never leave us or forsake us. And Lord, as the school year begins, we pray for students to grow in the knowledge of you, to remain in their walk with you. And Lord, we pray for parents that you would guide them and give them patience. We pray for teachers, Lord. We ask that you bless them. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Would you please stand as we sing to the Lord Jesus? Open our 
arms. He will never fail us. He will never fail us. God is with us. He will go before. He will never leave us. He will never leave us. God is for us. He has opened us. He will never fail us. He will never fail us. Lift it up. He defeated the grave. Raised to life. Our God is able in his name. We overcome for the Lord. Our God is able. Lift it up. He defeated the grave. Raised to life. Our Please be seated for prayer. Well, good morning, Lord of Life Church family. God has made an awesome day for us today. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. So uh, I'm proud to be and honored and humbled to be one of your seven elders here. My name is Randy Pauli. And so we want to thank the praise team today for what a great bunch of songs we've had and everything. Just want to let you know yesterday we had a Men on Fire men's group, and I was reminded of a, uh, a short uh, hymn when I was young, growing up in church with my parents, and it was called the Doxology, and it started as, praise God from whom all blessings flow. So with that, let's go to our awesome God with praise and with prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for all the many blessings that you have given us here at Lord of Life. You have blessed us with so many volunteers such as a praise team, the scripture readers, the, and elders that serve each service, but also the many behind the scenes volunteers that serve each week with joy and gladness. Continue to bless the altar care team, the fellowship servers, the greeters for each service, the nursery workers that care for our tiniest little Christians, the Sunday school teachers and leaders, and our welcome groups, center group. Father God, we lift up the mission of the month Refuge for Women in McHenry, Illinois, continue to bless this ministry as they provide a safe place for women to experience healing without distractions. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with all the children that are going back to school this week. Give them safe travels to and from their schools. We pray that they would, wouldn't have any anxiety from their daily schedules and that they may all have positive learning experiences daily. Father, lift up Pastor Matt and his family. Continue to give him rest from his busy schedule at home and pastoral duties. Strengthen and encourage him to boldly proclaim the gospel of Christ. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. I'll be in the back corner of church for prayer for anyone needing personal prayer. <laughs> 